can do the old Monty Python um, Life of Brian thing, but you haven't given us time to hide yet. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I liked it. <laughs> Gee, it's funny because I'm looking at that and thinking, okay, that's probably where the uh, the communal well is for that whole cluster of buildings. But you know, that's what and, I would put that tiny little. And movie. that is the that is the one problem with this map. I had um, covered well houses all Ooh. over, and they didn't get marked. It was one of the things wow. we don't need that level of detail. Let's chop it out. Um, and the thing is, I knew where all the skeletons were buried in all the closets because I'd put, I'd made the closets and put the skeletons there. <laughs> and I knew that five years or 10 years down the road, this could become really handy in a chapter in a novel or to put a starter adventure mm -hmm. for first to third level characters. But if you don't include the level of detail at the beginning and it's gone, then it's not there as a handy hook to hang the thing on. So yeah, I had public covered public well houses all over Waterdeep, and they were marked. In this Askliath Viking city I'm doing now, I didn't fall into that trap. I just had the wells, and I marked them. It's the first item in every city block when I'm mapping them. There's the public well, or that's a private well. You can't get to it unless you are that nobleman or whatever, because it's inside his compound. And it says, yeah, it's got a pump, because you can fight fires with it if it's got a foot pump. You know, and, and that was all part of it. That's what you use, that's the other thing you use public wells for. You fight fires. Not to stop the building burning down, because it's going to burn down. To stop the fire spreading, so you lose half your city instead of one building. What about over here, Ed? Here we've got a couple buildings that aren't reachable from any street, as far as I can tell. Except what they are is warehouses built onto. See, they have they're built as different. They're they're shown on the map as different buildings because mm -hmm. they were built at different times and they have different roof lines, and they're they're actually different structures. But to get to that, you would be in one of those. Uh, you see where it says R E E on Snail Street. And yeah. that row of three like-sized, yeah, mm -hmm. those are all stores with um, living quarters on the th third and fourth floor, offices on the second floor that you can rent. And the warehouses that supply those buildings, because this is Dock Ward, and I don't, I'm not talking huge shipping warehouses fr from the docks. I mean the warehouses that these businesses use for their wares, like... If you're buying lamp oil, are in that in those buildings, mm -hmm. so they're actually accessed through the the businesses at the front. Could you also rent one of those if you need yes. a, a temple for your oh uh, yeah Lobiatar fact, or Bane or whatever it might be? In fact, if you, as the business proprietor of that lamp oil shop, are having cash flow problems, mm -hmm. it would be very advantageous to you covertly surreptitiously mm. rent your warehouse so that cults can meet and sacrifice and draw chalk lines on the floor and chant in, in little round circles in the middle of your warehouse in the middle of the night and pay you more than you could make in honest trading all month yeah. and therefore you can easily meet your taxes and your business is prosperous and it's not prosperous. It's because that it's sort of like having prized tenants, you know. And 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 we saw because Elaine and I deliberately put it in to City of Splendors, the novel. We saw the gem cloaks, the the group of young wastrels, um, from the noble house. They they rented an upper room in a crappy ward of the city to have as their clubhouse mm -hmm. because they were gonna. They were going to go wenching, and they were going to bring ladies of ill repute back to this fun and get get drunk with them and not have their fathers say, and who's this? Or even worse, their mother. All right, one more question while I'm looking at the map and we've got you doing this, Ed. <laughs> so clearly 
the corner here of Odd Street, Ship Street, and Fish Street does not need to be this big for the traffic. But it does need it if you're going to turn wagons. Okay, so what would it Heavy. look like when I'm walking down Odd Street and I come towards this? There would almost always be a whole bunch of wagons standing, waiting for their chance to go down to whatever place they are going to supply. Like, as, as in they've either come from the docks and they're waiting to offload, and a lot of stuff in the smaller alleyways and to smaller establishments is done by handcart, pushcart. There's a pushcart prize in that. No, uh, uh, they're done with a, with a pushcart. And so the guy has stopped his wagon, and guys are waiting and paying their bit to tr transship a few crates of this, a few boxes of that, to take it. Because let's face it, most businesses, th think of the difference between a chain bookstore and an indie bookstore. The indie bookstore wants one, two, or four copies of everything, not... Oh, we'll take 50 copies of the latest bestseller. They want one or two. So that this is the transshipment point. And around the docks, you have lots of large areas because you also have the shipyards near there. So you've got lots of timber being brought on long wagons. And they have to stop in the street somewhere. And people still have to have room to get past them. So you have some large areas. That's something that... Um, if you live in a really old town or village, in our real world, you will have really wide main streets. And you go, why is the main street so wide? So they can turn a brewery wagon that's being pulled by all those perch runs that you see in the Budweiser commercials and so on. They take a lot of space to turn. And what you have is a successful port city that has made its living on being a successful port. So long ago, people like a Garen, who suffered no fools gladly, have said, no, it's going to be wider. I'm sorry that your building is in the way. I'm going to give you money to build a completely new building, and I'm going to knock your building down now. Or, uh, okay, I'll give you three days. Get everything that you, you want to keep out of it, and then I knock it down. Because we're widening that street. So they did that in the past. And now it's like, you're not allowed to encroach. You're not allowed to set up stalls unless you have a license. And of course, they're going to say, you're not sitting up there. The wagons need to turn there. Oh, I set up do, there. Oops, you just your stall just got trampled. So, do they so, have traffic rules, Ed? As in, oh, yeah. You know, one direction stays on the left and another stays oh, no, on the no, right? Oh, no, no, no. No, they don't have standing like rules. They don't have standing yeah. rules. What they have is agreed upon with the guilds circuits that the wagons would take. And then they have watch patrols doing traffic cop duty. Not with white gloves and so on, but it's, hey, move that there. Move. Move along. But I'm waiting to unload. You can do it next hour. One bell from now, you can unload, and you'll still have your head to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you've got the, the sort of jovial watchman who's backed by all his friends, and you're not going to argue with him. Not twice. So you then move. And, and you also have what happens in our real world, in our large cities... I have to pick up or drop somebody right downtown. There's no parking. So I drop them and I circle the block. And I'm waiting. If they're on the street corner, I'll pick them up. I'll stop long enough to pick them up. And by the time the cop gets over to give me the ticket, I've driven away. But I can't park anywhere, so I can't stop. So I'll just circle the block. There's a lot of that that goes on too. And there's people who deliberately, they're always trundling. They're selling from their cart. They're selling from their wagon. So does that mean if you get really familiar, let's say you want to ambush a, a cart for a particular guild, can you oh, probably yeah. predict where they're going to be? Oh, yeah. Within a few streets. And probably um, if, if the guy is very methodical and he knows where his high sales are, you'll, you'll be able to tell you which time of the day he'll be on this street or that street. And the two streets are adjacent. He's going to be somewhere on there. He might be circling. But yeah, you can pretty much tell them where he's going to be. And yes, it is very easy to... to. But if somebody who's going to get robbed again and again, he's then going to complain to the watch that they're not guarding him. And they're going to go, oh, somebody else wants their hands held. Okay. But they're going to... Again, because it's easy for the watch to hire these street kids for a few coins 
You just tail behind that guy, and the moment of trouble, you run like the wind to us. Okay. Because then the watch comes out looking good, the kid gets to eat, and the guy gets protected. And everybody says, yeah, they're pretty good in Waterdeep. It's, you know, they took care of my problem. And fish cut cord is the same way. It's a, it's a, because you, you've got to assemble those wagons and everything. They've got a stage somewhere. Let me ask you this then: If I'm walking down Fish Street, um, yeah. how far can I see? Like, you know, if it's the middle of the, if it's when, ev when everything busy is happening, you know, how crowded is the street? How, how many Fair. wagons are in the way? Uh, not a lot of wagons. On uh, like at the height of the busiest times of the day. If you look at Fish Street from, say, um, just below number six there, where it's all coming together, and then Snail Street at the other end, yeah, yeah. so from there to there, um, on that stretch, there are probably, um, probably 12 wagons, and maybe three of them are pulled hard to the, to the fronts of the buildings because they're delivering, or they're, quote, parked. You know, they're not trying to get anywhere. And the rest of them are trying are slowly moving along through a shoulder to shoulder with people with handcarts and people carrying stuff by what we used to call the two paddles method you know where you have a a, a beam and you hang stuff from the beam and the beam goes across the shoulders of two beefy mm -hmm. people and they walk along through the crowd and that's where you have the the cute scene in the movie where somebody garrots themselves on the beam as they try and go underneath it or whatever. But they, this actually does happen in real life. Uh, years and years ago, I was put up in Stockholm in Sweden for a gaming convention, and I walked through the old part of the city in the morning, yeah. and, two, yeah. and two guys carrying a chandelier from a beam on their shoulders were walking through the crowd coming in the other direction. <laughs> Because it, that was one of those little blocks where they didn't allow vehicular traffic. So they were cutting across it with their cut glass chandelier. Is is there a place at all in Waterdeep where it doesn't, you can't, no carts allowed, no no wagons oh, yeah. allowed, etc.? Oh yeah, right up in front of uh, Pyrgurin's Palace, um, between okay. Agarin's Tower and Pyrgurin's Palace. Because that's where you, to, to put it in real world modern terms, that's where you don't want the terrorist to have his wagon full of explosives yep um so all this area right here uh on my map you're pointing uh okay yeah between agarin's tower and pyrgarin's palace you can you can freely go the other side of agarin's tower like street of silks and and turn yeah. but yeah. it between agarin's tower and the front of pyrgarin's palace the, no no wagons in there unless it's coaches with people on them and their envoys and it's yeah. an affair of state or the equivalent of a noble arriving to to uh, to attend a meeting or make a presentation they're not going to allow tradesmen's carts in there because there's no need for it the tradesmen's carts are going to go to fetlock court the stuff is going to be unloaded and hand carts are going to take them into the rest of it so my last question, which is a general water deep question, is there's so many streets that have got names. Like, for example, there's Selduth Street up mm -hmm. the top right of that image. Mm -hmm. uh, in Dock Ward, there was Bel Belnimbra's Street. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many of those names have a story behind them off the top of your head? Uh, tons of them. Because they're, they're almost always named for, for somebody who was somebody and is now dead of old age. Yeah. Um, who was somebody prominent, local, who built buildings along that street or lived in that area and was... In the case of Belnimbra, this was a former courtesan, well, let's be blunt, prostitute, mm -hmm. um, who was very popular, very good-looking, and she had a well talent for a few magical effects, never trained, but she was very good at using her charming, vivacious personality to stay friends with a lot of her clients. And she was able to borrow money from them. And what he used it for was to buy buildings and build new ones and become a landlord very slowly, one building at a time. So it's called Belnimbra Street because when she died at age 80, having never left, um, like she always resided on the street, um, she owned 
about half the buildings on one side of it. Now they, she had no children. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the uh, prices of being a prostitute was she was barren, whether she was before him or whether she was after all the, all the use she got. Um, but she had no children, so the the buildings aren't all still owned by the same family or whatever. It, it all, but she's remembered with that. Uh, Seldeth is a family. It was a family of cutthroat, successful merchants. So there are a lot of guys who had a last name of Seldeth. And there still are a few of them. They don't live on Seldeth Street anymore because they spent so much time in prison that they decided that it would be nice to relocate to other places like Secomber and Scornerbell, where they didn't... Scornerbell in particular, where they didn't care. And they have now bought their way back into Waterdeep. But they don't live on Seldust Street. So, I, so I, I, I had a play with the lineage of Waterdeep, and I think I named one of the uh, early warlords a Selduth. Would that be sure possible? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. Let me ask this question. So, when you have a street that has a clear implication, like Ship Street or Lack Purse Lane, mm -hmm. um, how often does that reflect the here and now versus what used to be? It's what used to be. These streets with those sorts of names, yep. Sail Street, Dock Street, Ship Street, Fish Street, these are from when the port was first established. Okay. Now, it's fairly good bet there's still a lot of fishmongers on Fish Street because, hey, harbor's right there. And when a place smells like that and has smelled like that for centuries, why move it? As in, nobody else wants that smell. You know, right. <laughs> that sort yeah. of thing. So some things stay the same. Um, Adder Lane, by the way, uh, was uh, a long time, long predecessor of the Serpent, was known as the Adder. Mm -hmm. And he was, a, he was a crime boss. So And that was where he lived. So that's Adder Lane. Um, but I mean, a lot of, a lot of, most of these these names are of past because they've been named for a long time. Okay, so it do, it's not yeah. like Lack Purse Lane gains its name when it had a different name because people getting pickpocketed and then right. as soon as it kind of gets known as Lack Purse Lane then it mo then the business no. moves elsewhere and it gets another name. Yeah, no, there's not too much renaming because again, it, it, it behooves everybody for deliveries and for the watch to okay. keep the same names. Lack Purse Lane didn't actually get that because of thievery or cut purses. It got that because that's where the poor people lived. Look at all how small the buildings are. Uh -huh. That was the slum. Where all the, the laborers who toiled all day lived. And therefore, you could rent a really spartan room with a chamber pot for one copper for a day from high noon to high noon was one copper. And you got every six day free. So you could afford to live there. So it was Lack Purse Lane. Cool. You once answered Ed, someone who queried about Arun's Alley because they got very excited because they thought it was Arun Mayerdrim who was the father of the Black Star. Yes. And, and, and you had to tell them, well, unfortunately, that was Arun Jan Thule, a famous local baker who flourished in the world <laughs> two, two centuries past. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so every... every just because the names there of someone famous doesn't mean it's necessarily that famous person. Might yeah, and I'm, very, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to build the, the history, the feel that this place has the history by doing that. And the other thing was, TSR, for, for dispel confusion reasons, didn't want too many of the same name characters in print and active. They allowed me to have Torm the God and Torm the Thief, who was named after the God. But I wanted to have multiple namings. Um, those of you who aren't American, like me <laughs> and George, and, and those of us who aren't of a certain age don't remember this, but when JFK was riding high, it's amazing how many kids got named Kennedy as a mm. second or third name. It became a fad. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, I wanted that sort of thing reflected. You know, there'd be lots of people. You had a good, popular local lord or a good, popular um, uh, person who was uh, 
charismatic and well-loved around the city, there'd be lots of people named after them, particularly if the person was successful and lucky, because you'd sort of say, I want to be as lucky as he was. I want to have rags to riches, so I'm going to name my kid that so they'll be lucky. So you'd have lots of people with the same name. So would you see people named Agera in Waterdeep? Oh, yeah. But not right away, because you didn't want to come to the attention of the real live Agarin for the wrong reason. Okay. But, and then you have to wait and see, is Agarin regarded afterwards as some sort of tyrant with d d distaste, or is he looked back on with golden nostalgia? You know, make water deep great again, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you look back and say, oh, when in the days when Agarin was huh? lord, well, if, if you look back and think those days were great, whether they were or not, if you think they were great, then you, you might want to name your kid a Garen. Let me go back to getting off the boat in Dockwood. <laughs> so I just landed... <laughs> so, you're on the docks. so you're on the, on the docks. docks. Right. I'm on the so docks. So one thing I've noticed in European old European cities is like you look at a map and you're like, oh, I should go like this and this and this. And then you get there on the ground and it doesn't really work that way. There's like a natural way that the city sort of pushes you as you walk up yep. from, the, from the train station or the docks yep. or whatever to, to get to the heart of the... So I land in the center of Dock Ward and I'm kind of letting the crowds and the, the street flow push me along. What's the likely route I take to get to the center of the city? To get to the center of the city from Dock Ward? Yeah, or where, you know, like, okay. assuming most stuff I want is to the north. If you want to, if but you I'm know, wandering. If you, oh, okay. But if you know the city yep. uh, and you want to get out of Dock Ward in a hurry, yep. get out of its crowding and its traffic, you would probably take Net Street and try and get to the Way of the Dragon in a hurry and bypass. Mm -hmm. it's, okay. it's like your interstate bypass. But if you mm -hmm. don't know the city and you're literally wandering mm -hmm. and you, you can tell that you're going north because there's Mount Waterdeep rising up in front of you and you can you're never going to get lost in terms of general crude direction because of mount water deep yeah you know it's like it's like heading for the sun or left, heading for the moon know. yeah then then you would you're going to end up being pushed through the intersection of fish street and snail street right. okay uh unless you you dock way over here on where it says dock street then you're going to get pushed up Bell Nimbus Street. Okay. So those uh, are the two things, and that'll kind of take you up to here. Yeah, that's right. And and if we if we actually went off that map to the north, th there is Virgin Square and other places. There there are large um, open areas that those lead to. There, Bing. Yeah. And there there you can you can hire lots of people to take you to a to guide you to an address. Or you can get hired, or you can buy something to eat, or you can use one of the little um, outhouse kiosk things, you know, chamber pot in a a, a, a <clears throat> wyvern on the job. Uh, <laughs> um, and then you will you will naturally come to the intersection of High Road and Water Deep Way, right there. Mm -hmm. And that's a place you're not really encouraged to loiter because, for one thing, you'll get flattened by wagons and carts coming through. But you end up there, and you sort of draw breath, and you decide where you're going to go. And if you're literally just wandering, wanting to see the sights, you're going to end up going up either a long water deep way to see the castle and the palace as civic buildings, or if you're shopping, you're going to be going along the high road, going north along the high road, and you're rapidly going to realize, hey, the shopping isn't great. It's good, but it isn't great. And you're either going to end up at the market, where all the stalls are, up the pink thing up there, or you're going to turn towards the sea and end up on the Street of Silks, or the Street of Bells, or the, um, and you're, you're going to discover there's some really um, high-end but classy shops there. So it, it all depends on where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do. What's and, really cool about that map, sorry to interrupt, Ed, is yeah, I just ahead. realized for the first time ever that those little markings on the roadways tell you what type of road they are. Yeah, you like bet. The little orange, orange hashes are corduroy, corduroy log roads. 
Yeah. And any, anything that, that's the standard tan color, in other words, all the alleyways, etc., is just dirt or gravel. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. It's, yeah. it's only the gray ones that are paved and the pink ones are cobblestone. Yep. So, and uh, years and years ago, um, my father had to meet somebody in Hollywood. And this somebody was not a huge high muckamuck executive. He was a fellow businessman. Guess where they met? Cemetery. Because <laughs> you can find it. You can park. It's yeah. free, or in those days it was free. Now there's admission no, charges. Nobody's loitering. <laughs> yes, nobody's loitering. And you can walk in the open air. And in those days, everybody smoked. All businessmen, or majority of them smoked. You could smoke. And you could stroll in pleasant green surroundings that had benches. Guess what? There's a city of the dead. It gets used the same way in Waterdeep. If you're from outside the city, it's easy to find the city of the dead. You can ask your way. And you can say... I, I have to pay my res- respects. I have to see my, where my ancestors... Can you direct me to the City of the Dead? And the watch will h- helpfully say, Sure, right over there. There's a gate. Da, da, da. So you go over there, and you have prearranged that at high sun, or that two bells after high sun, you will meet so-and-so. And you see number four there, or number six in the City mm-hmm. of the Dead? You just, you just mention the... Um, find this... And it'll be an intersection. So the person can loiter there without seeming to loiter. And they can easily spot the person they're meeting. And if it's someone they don't know, there's usually an agreed upon, you know, look for the man in the red hat. And he'll walk up to you and tell you how great the weather's been. Ah! And then you fall in step beside him and you're discussing your business deal. I have 16 slaves in my hold. I dare not show their faces to the world. Um, ah. what, what do you give me? Or, or whatever it is. Whatever the meeting is for. So I, I, I cribbed that from real life. And sure enough, much later on, I had a meeting in Hollywood. And guess what? Cemetery. <laughs> because if you don't have an office and you don't have a thing, and driving is so lousy and you can't park outside a particular restaurant, you meet in the cemetery and get your business done. And I thought, okay. I'm putting that in the realms because that's cool. It makes sense, yeah. And uh, but uh, this is also the only open public park where you can eat lunch. If you can reach it for your lunch, and it, of course lunch may not be a midday meal, whenever you're given time off from your shop and you want to go eat, particularly if you're romancing someone, La 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 la